Hey, what's up everybody? RPM with you here. All right, so in my master bedroom, as you can see, I've got a Samsung 46 inch TV. I think it's approximately three years old. And it works great. It's got a great picture on it, everything I like about it. Problem. It's got plagued with the bad capacitors issue. Let me show you what happens. Now, normally, I keep every, all my power and everything backed up here. Um, so when the power flickers and stuff, the TV pretty much stays on always. But let me turn it off and I'm going to show you what happens when you have a bad caps problem. I have turned it off. All right. Now, what I want you to notice, let me get rid of the volume on the receiver. What I want you to notice is I'm going to turn it back on and I want you to listen for a clicking noise. And it doesn't appear to be doing it now. Nope. That's because it's warm. So I'm going to let the set stay off for a little bit. And I'll be back with you in just a few minutes and hopefully I can show you what happens. All right, everybody, it's RPM back with you. All right, I don't have time to screw with this thing, wait for it to cool down so it won't shut on. Basically, what happens when these units go bad, they start clicking when you try to turn them on, they just cycle power over and over and over again. And it's a classic symptom of a bad capacitor in the power supply. So I'm going to tear into this thing, see if I got capacitors, and see if I can fix it. Um, I've got a special mount that I put up here back about three, four years ago, as you can see. And I'll show you guys how I, I did that. I may well it up some some steel and stuff bolted to the back of the TV and got my wires and stuff coming out of the ceiling. Um, but I will uh, I will show you that and expose that to you guys in just a few minutes. Um, I gotta take it down. Put this thing on the bed. So as you can see, got me a sheet laying on the bed, actually a quilt, lay it face down so I can work on it. So be right back with you. All right, everybody, it's done. You can see, here's my mount. Now all it is is a flat piece of steel screwed with some nice heavy screws into the joist. And then I have that little thing right there is basically just a piece of tube um, welded on there and there's a set screw in it. The set screw locks the whole TV together. Let me show you guys. Got the TV down, it's laying face down on the bed here. And you can see, um, ignore these things. These are actually just for me to help hold it as I lift it up there. You see my bracket that I made, heavy duty steel bracket made out of quarter inch material. probably could hang my uh, Honda Odyssey off the ceiling um, but it's all the material I had so I made this this mount use the caps head screws I just like these things uh, but you can see this little uh, stud that I have uh, welded on here okay these studs they slide into those pieces up there in the ceiling so both of them slide the same direction as you can see see this other one right here so they both slide to the right and then when I tighten up the set screws on that little pipe up there it sets the angle so I tighten them up and then the set screw comes in and grabs this right here and sets the angle so anyways I'm going to sort of dust it off a little bit this is always a good time whenever you go into your electronics to always clean out dust and things so I'm going to dust it off I've dusted off the outside a little bit I'll remove our our bracket and uh, ignore that that's a remote repair it's stuck on it with double stick tape I don't think I have to remove it I think we're okay and there's probably about 20 screws that go all the way around the perimeter of the unit I'm gonna remove those and get the back off of this thing and then we'll get to it okay everybody RPM back with you you can see I've removed my bracket from the main mounting holes here I removed all of them right okay so now it goes to the small screws and get all the small screws all the way around the outside perimeter and take it apart all right, everybody, RPM back with you. You can see I got to back off the thing. About four or five screws. We're about six minutes into this thing since I started. This is about a $200 TV repair. It's going to encompass about 65 cents worth of parts. <laughs> uh, just a little bit of know-how and even a normal old common everyday redneck like myself with just a few years of, well, 20 years of electronic experience could do this. But you don't need to be electronics technician to do this you just need to use a little basic common sense and a little bit of uh, motivation drive uh, and determination that nothing's going to scare you so uh, anyways here's the back of the tv not a whole lot to it uh, the majority of these sets are really all in the lcd panel on the other side you got an inverter board over here with some fluorescent light kit on this side 
another one over here these are side lit tvs and here's the power supply this is the part right here that basically takes your 120 volts coming in from your your house uh, uh circuit and convert it over to usable uh voltages uh for use you know in the tv set which is low voltage dc uh typically and uh very much desired to be uh filtered uh with no ac um sine waves in it whatsoever nice and filtered and it, part of that job after the voltage regulation takes place part of the job of the components on this board and the overall power supply as a whole is to make sure that power is completely clean and filtered and one of the items that basically com electronic components that uh, serves that task would be capacitors now a lot of you guys have probably heard about capacitors uh, I'll will show you guys uh, some that if you just go to Google and search for bad caps B-A-D-C-A-P-S. You'll see all kinds of information on how these things are plagued the market. The electrolytic capacitors are basically little canisters that are basically used as short-term batteries that filter out uh, unwanted frequencies in a um, in a in an AC signal. Uh, if you do enough filtering, you wind up with DC, uh, and that's what we want is DC. Um, these things are prone to heat problems, uh, especially when you mount them directly. And let me switch over to to uh macro here from a from my uh from a camera uh but these things are prone to heat issues uh mounting them right next to a heat sink is probably a bad idea but for some reason that's what these companies like to do they do this in motherboards for computers they do it on tv sets they do it everywhere uh regardless uh they're prone to heat temperatures high temperatures and overall time they dry out and they uh they eventually uh they have a hard time uh and they give out and they start to short basically uh giving hell and uh, uh, uh erratic and inconsistent reliability in your electronic components uh, in this particular case the component that's having trouble is the power supply. It's having a hard time coming on and keeping the relays closed for the power to go to the, to the overall units. When this unit gets cold, when this TV gets cold, it no longer wants to power and stay on. It just goes through a power cycle. This is the common and very frequent problem with a lot of Samsung televisions also. So I've seen some Toshibas that do this. Um, all the sets were, uh, they might be making sets right now today, who knows, that have uh, this problem. Uh, in this particular case, uh, here's our capacitors that are bad right here. You can see how the tops of these things will actually pop, puff up out like that. And that means they're bad, okay? Um, these right here seem to be okay, but these right here, they're bad. I bought some lot bigger ones, which I'm going to uh, basically put in there to take care of that filtering. Um, this set would probably run if I just simply pulled these out, taking the load off of the circuit, but then we'd have an unfiltered power supply. So the best thing to do is uh, harvest in some, uh, go ahead and patch in some better, good quality caps that aren't burning out um, or already completely destroyed. But you can see by the tops of those caps how they're, they're puffed out. So I'm going to replace as many of these on the board that I can possibly see that have been abused by heat. I, those things look kind of small to me. <laughs> they're like uh, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch tall. They look really small for power supply caps. So we're going to replace them and we're going to get this sucker working. Hopefully this whole job should not take more than 30-45 minutes. Uh, my next step, let me flip over to the, uh, the camera lens here that I need. Um, the next step is just remove the, the cables and connectors from the board, uh, pull out the screws, flip the board over, pull the caps out, solder some new ones in. So stick with me, I'll be right back. Okay guys, as you can see, I've removed the power supply board. I'm actually looking at the television from the opposite side here. I've removed the power supply board. There's about five or six cables that go plugging into it to get power to the various components and whatnot, control circuits. Uh, they're really, it's hard to put them in wrong. Um, don't worry about it too much. Just kind of make note of where everything plugs in. Um, the only two that you could switch around are the ones to the inverter um, backlights. And if one would reach the other side and the other would reach the other side, it doesn't matter because both of them just power to the same circuit. The rest of the stuff can only go in one spot when it plugs back into the connectors. So again, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. Let me flip my camera back over to the close-up shots. Here's our power supply board. And if you were to order this from Samsung, this would probably cost you about $350. Um, of course, you could replace a TV for $800. So um, there you go. There's the capacitors right there. And as you can see, and I know the lighting isn't that good. As you can see, let me flip over to the other mode so it doesn't any better. No, that's not better. Um, as you can see, 
uh, this mo this um, these capacitors right here slightly have a, a, a puffed out top and you do not want that that means they've gone bad these two right here specifically these two seem okay these two are definitely bad I'm gonna replace them all and uh, we're gonna get to it here in just a minute hey boy and my boy Bobby's going to help me hold the board while I desolder. Maybe he'll hold the camera for me. So I'm just going to use the old trusty bed here to get this done. So stick with me. All right, we're back with you here. And I got my trusty boy here with me. He's going to be cameraman in just a few minutes. We're going to desolder these caps right here. He'll hold the camera for me. And let me show you. I've got some here. Um, and it looks like they're 2200s by 16 volts. You can put larger voltage capacitors in just about anything. Um, this particular case, I don't know what they are, but these are good size filter caps. The problem with some of these boards is pretty typical, as one of the problems was, they would actually have a 12 volt circuit and they put a 10 volt capacitor in there. Eventually, over time, it ain't going to work. The 10 volt capacitor is going to short out. Uh, that's a design flaw, and uh, they were trying to cut corners. In this particular case, I don't know. When I get in close and I read the details on the side of the capacitor, I'll know more. But basically, I know it's approximately a 12 to a 13 or 14 volt circuit. I got 16 uh, volt capacitors right here. They should be fine, uh, and they should be plenty of size, and I think I'll have clearance. So we're going to get to this in just a minute. All right, everybody, I'm back with you. Let me show you what you're going to need. You need a little bit of solder, not much. You're gonna need a pair of snippers, you need some capacitors. Here's a solder sucking tool that's pretty cool. You plunge it down like this, you stick it on the hole and you suck stuff out like that. You push the button, it works like a plunger and it creates a vacuum, sucks the solder up into this plastic tip right here. If you know what you're doing, you don't even need that. Uh, most people would probably prefer to use or recommend that you use a soldering iron similar to this type. It's a 15 watt or a 20 watt pencil soldering iron. You can get them at Radio Shack, places like that. I buy them by the dozens off of eBay for $1.99 a piece. Come straight from China. I lose them. Don't matter, right? $1.99. But if you're like me, you don't need none of that crap. You just use one of these soldering irons. Now, the important thing about a soldering iron like this is it's high wattage gets hot very fast. You don't want to put too much heat on your circuit board. I touch it basically, and I'm gonna pull that thing, pull them capacitors out by my bare hands, and it'll pop right out. It's the easiest way to do it. Replacing capacitors is easy. You're gonna watch me do it in real time right here. Plus, you don't have to wait 15, 20 minutes for soldering iron to get hot. So, stick around. All right, everybody, RPM back with you here. Here's the circuit board right here. Here's the two capacitors that we're going to replace. Probably should replace these here as well. Um, basically, what's going on is they are connected, and you can see right here, they're connected on this side right here. Both of them right here, these solder joints right here. Now, you want to be careful not to hit anything else. You just want to hit nothing but those joints right there. So, you want to hit those with a soldering iron. And what I like to do, and you can see they're connected in, in parallel. So basically this one is connected to that one, that one's to that one. So it's just two of them stacked on top of each other. If you wanted to, you could literally solder one of these on this side of the board and pull those out. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab that thing like this. I'm going to pinch it like this. And I like to push them over. Now, here are the two points of, of interest right here. Here's my soldering iron. I don't want to get too much heat in it. What I've done here is I've laid out an old t-shirt so my wife doesn't bash me over the head for messing up her bedspread right i'll get it hot you can see how it's getting hot right there see and then what we want to do is we're going to just back these on out you can do a little waddle a little waddle move with them and just pull them right out you can put some heat in them and pull them right out just like that there's one side and then it's time to put some heat in the other side some heat in it like that And here it comes just like that get both sides and walk them right on out now I'll probably clean this up in just a minute this is a single-sided board so there's no concern about you know the extra pads and stuff getting wrecked from the other side sometimes what they do is they actually uh, fold over the leads a little bit like they did in this case and what this says right here it's an 820 microfarad capacitor 105 degrees at 25 volts is what that is all right and it's dead now these 16 volt capacitors obviously ain't going to work unless i put them in series so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put two of them in series and i believe what's going to happen is you're going to wind up with half the microfarads which will be about a thousand which would be fine and we're going to wind up with twice the the uh the voltage uh handling capabilities 
Hit the button, Bobby. Scrap. Yeah, all right, everybody. I'm back with you here. Let me show you what it looks like when a capacitor goes bad. Excuse my nasty nails. You can see right there. See how the top is bulged out on it? No longer flat. And you can see often, too, that the rubber on the bottom starts to bulge. This is a bad capacitor. We got two of them that are bad right here. Got a bag of, of uh, 16 volters, which ain't going to work. So I got to rethink my whole problem here. Maybe run to Radio Shack and get a couple of the uh, couple of the 25 volt ones. Or look in my parts bin and see what I got. Bye. All right, everybody. RPM back with you. I've run in the office here. I just want to confirm. And I remember back in the olden days, uh, in the uh, early 80s, when I used to uh, build circuits and stuff, uh, parallel and series capacitors. So what I basically have is a 25 volt circuit. Uh, actually, it's a 20 volt circuit. I've got 16 volt capacitors. I don't want to use a 16 volt capacitor in there in parallel. So what I'm going to do is, since there are 2200 microfarad capacitors, I'm replacing an 820 microfarad capacitor. Actually, two of those, and they're wired in series normally in the board, the way the board was designed by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in series two 2200 microfarad capacitors, and here's all my formulas and stuff, and that's going to give me approximately, I'm guessing, approximately a thousand microfarads of capacitance. It's going to double my voltage from 16 volts to 32. So the circuit should be able to hold 32 volts, uh, which is way above you know the standard 25 volt circuit uh, or circuit capacity that the capacitors had. And uh, what I'm going to wind up with is approximately a thousand microfarads of capacitance replacing the 820 that was in there. So this should be fine. This should be uh, overkill, um, much better. Uh, the only downside is that it won't look the prettiest on the circuit board. But I don't look in my TV very often. In fact, this is the first time I've looked in it in three years. So I really don't care what it looks like as long as it's reliable and it works. So the next time you see me, I'll be doing just that. Bye. Okay, people, back here with you. All right, so I got two caps here I'm going to replace. Uh, I'm going to put these in series. Now, here's something to note. And they do this all the time in circuitry. They try to put two cheap, inexpensive capacitors in a circuit board. Now, here's the back here. One capacitor went from here to here. One side's a negative, one side's a positive. One capacitor went from here to here. One side's negative, one side's a positive. Now, as you can see, this side right here is connected together. This side is connected together. So all they're really doing is connecting these capacitors in series. So in total, when you had the two in there, you had a you had a 25 volt capacity maximum current uh, maximum voltage rating on the capacitor, and you had an 820 here and an 820 here, giving you approximately what 600 and uh, uh, I'm sorry 1620 microfarad capacity, something like that, right? Um, is that is that what I'm thinking? Okay, so what I'm going to basically do is take the two 2200s and I'm going to wire them in series, giving me a 32 volt capacitor. I'm going to put the negative side here, put the positive side here on the other side, of course, and uh, it should work. Okay, I'm back here with you guys. Here's the contraption I've come up with because I don't feel like going to Radio Shack. Basically, I've got two series 2200 microfarad capacitors in series, giving me 4400 microfarads capacity at 16 volts i've taken two sets of those and put them in series together which will drop my capacitance from 4400 back to 2200 microfarads and give me a total voltage capacity of 16 plus 16 or 32 volt total voltage capacity it's not the prettiest thing in the world i'm gonna solder up this center lead right here this will be my negative, this will be my positive, I'll solder it into my board, and believe it or not, this will be a lot better solution, tilted away from the heat sink, away from the heat, and we will have a working fixed power supply here shortly. And here it is, finally, it's the most rigged looking hunk of crap I've ever seen. <laughs> Anyways, there's your four caps right there, you can see I've got the negatives going over to the left where you have the stripe side and you have the positives going over to this side. It's a series parallel combination, giving me t plenty of voltage coverage and also giving me plenty of filtering capacity with the microfarad uh, total capacitance. Uh, on the other side, there wasn't a whole lot going on except for uh, two solder joints. Again, and I don't know if you can see those or not, just two solder joints there. Uh, I'm gonna use some hot glue and uh, make sure I uh, seal that up real good and everything and mount it to the board, but it's not going anywhere even like it is now. I'm gonna make it sure it's a little bit further away from the heat sink, and hopefully this will hold up for a good long time. Next time you see me, TV will be working.
all right everybody i'm back with you one more time you can see there's my solution right there uh hot glued it in there and got a little bit away from this heat sink you can see where the original capacitors were right there i've got four of them in here now they're nice and sturdy not going anywhere let me switch to uh back to wide angle uh got a little dust in my nose here i was doing some uh air dusting blowing some dust out of the back of the unit uh, it's pretty much time to test it so let me grab my cord here <clears throat> now what do we expect when we test it well like i explained before one of the symptoms of these samsung televisions is that uh, after it's a cold uh, television and it has been started in a while uh, what happens is um, once it gets to a cold temperature is a power cycle you'll hear the relay click and it'll go back off the relay will click it'll go back off the relay will click and go back off and that's the symptoms so uh, what do I expect? I expect it to be fixed, but either we are uh, either going to have a working television set or we're going to see some smoke and fire. So let me plug in my power here. And here it comes. I hear a click. Here's the speakers. There's my backlight, as you can see through the hole there and it is on I think we're good I'm gonna put it back on we're gonna hang it been almost uh, 45 minutes bye all right here's my final video and there's my TV back up on the ceiling which actually was the hardest part it took a good 15 20 minutes of hoisting it up there and there it is working like it's supposed to got on CNBC right now um, now what I'm gonna do is of course I'm gonna test it by you know turn off the power and leaving off the power for uh, you know a good hour or two um, and then check it again and make sure everything's good but that circuit seems to be working great the backlight actually seems to be a little bit brighter which means I can turn down my backlight and my brightness a little bit I think that has something to do with maybe the power supply was struggling to actually fight those leaky capacitors uh, which would make perfect sense so the power supply voltage was a little bit down so anyways uh, that's the RPM tech tip by the way this is a 46 inch Samsung made in 2007 I believe it is a model well it's hard to see tell you what I'll be right back with the flashlight no I'll tell you later in the video Bobby Give me the flashlight, please. Tell you what. Thank you, sir. There it is, right there. All right, guys, it's RPM out with the uh, Samsung power supply bag capacitor repair tip. See if she comes on. And that bump noise was poor timing on my wife's behalf. There was nothing going on with the TV. No clicks. And there we go. We are back up. All right, guys. RPM out. Enjoy.